Hello everyone, in this lecture today I'm going to talk to you about central dogma of molecular biology, a really important concept in molecular biology. So what does this central dogma of molecular biology explain? It explains the full flow of genetic information from DNA to RNA and from RNA to protein. This is called central dogma of molecular biology. Okay, so what is central dogma of molecular biology? Central dogma of molecular biology refers to the flow of genetic information from DNA to RNA to make a functional protein, functional product that is a protein. Okay, so this is a DNA, it's a double uh, helical standard, double, double helical structure, and we get an RNA from DNA to RNA. DNA also makes a new copy of DNA. This process is called replication that is facilitated by DNA polymerase. Okay, so DNA makes a new copy of a DNA that is called DNA replication. And from the DNA, from the DNA, uh, RNA is formed. Okay, so RNA is formed. This process is called transcription. Okay, so what is transcription? In the transcription process, the information in the DNA of every single cell that is converted into small portable messenger RNAs or RNA messages or a messenger RNAs. Okay, so from DNA, we get RNA that is a messenger RNA. So this process is called transcription. Okay, remember this guys, transcription. DNA makes a new copy of a DNA. That's a replication from DNA to RNA. That is transcription. Okay, cryption. And there is another process, another part of this uh, central dogma of molecular biology that is called translation. In translation process, from the messenger RNA, finally, the message, the information is converted into in the form of functional product, that is a protein. So RNA to protein, that is called translation. So how you are going to differentiate which one is first? From DNA to RNA, transcription, cryption C, it comes first, and translation, so L, it comes after, right? So C and L, translation, so transcription and translation. Translation is from RNA to protein. Okay, so in translation process, uh, this messages uh, from uh, in the in the, this uh, RNA, you know, in the, in the form of this messenger RNAs, you know, uh, they are actually converted or they are actually converted to make a specific proteins. Okay, that these proteins that is called translation. So translation is from RNA is converted into the uh, protein. This process is called translation and in normal cases, the, the, the genetic information flows, flows from DNA to RNA and from RNA to the protein. This is the central dogma of molecular biology, but there is an exception to this process. The exception in the case of retroviruses, for example, HIV viruses, where the, the transfer of information occurs from RNA to make a new DNA. Okay, so this is an exception uh, to the central dogma of molecular biology. Remember this, guys. This is really important. In the exam, you should you are expected to write this. Okay. So now I have explained what is central dogma of molecular biology and and what are the exception to it. Now I want to move ahead. Here I'm going to talk to you about how messenger RNA processing occurs in case of eukaryotes. In case of prokaryotes, the RNA is directly converted into the protein. But in case of eukaryotes, for example, like mammals, we have a DNA. So in the DNA, we have a gene. The gene has in five prime and three prime untested regions, and also coding sequences that are exons and non coding sequences that are introns. So, what happens? Transcription occurs, and we get a primary RNA transcript, or you call it pre mRNA, or whatever the name you want to give it. So, we have this trans precursor form. So, in this, in this precursor form, five prime cap is added to why this five prime cap is added first at the five prime end. The fibrin cap adds to protect this RNA from degradation and also it helps in uh, ribosome binding during translation process. And we also have another event occurring that is a poly A tail at the five prime end cap is added and at the three prime end this polyadenine they are added at the three prime end. So again the function of polyadenine poly A tail this is called poly A tail is the same the function is that it protects from degradation and also helps in um, ribosome binding during translation. Okay, so now we have this RNA which has five prime cap and three three prime poly A tail. And after this, what happens? RNA splicing occurs. Why this even occurs? Because if you look at this form of the 
RNA, we have both coding and non-coding part. The non-coding part is called introns and coding is the exon. Non-coding sequence is introns and coding sequence is exon. So this non-coding sequences, this yellow colored non-coding sequences, it has to be removed. Okay, so it's removed by the process called RNA splicing and this is carried out by the complex called spliceosome. Okay, and then finally we have five these introns removed and exons are ligated together and we get a, a messenger RNA. Okay, so mRNA. So this is the process how this mRNA processing occurs in eukaryotes, but in prokaryotes uh, RNA is directly converted into a protein, so no such processing even occurs. Okay important addition of five prime cap addition of polyethyl and then mm, removal of introns by rna splicing finally we get a messenger rna so now like I explained before i want to give you the definitions introns they are non-coding sequences present in a gene right so this is intron this is a non-coding sequence exons they are coding sequences yeah they code for the protein RNA splicing, what is this? This is the removal of introns and joining of exons. So in RNA splicing, these introns will be removed and these exon and exons, uh, they will be ligated. And this is splicing mechanism is carried out by a spliceosome. It's a spliceosome is a complex that consists of RNA plus protein. Okay, so these are few concepts, few that you must remember. Now, finally, the key points. The key point is that 5' cap is added. That 5' cap is 7 methyl guanosine cap added at the 5' end of pre mRNA. So, why this is there is a need to do this because it protects this nascent messenger RNA from degradation and assists in ribosome binding during translation. Polyethyl, why polyethyl is added at the 3' end? Polyethyl is added at the 3' end, polyadenine. The reason is that it protects MRNA from the degradation and also it helps in the export. Not only that, it also helps in binding, you know, in, in, in the translation initiation process, okay? And introns are removed, of course, from pre-mRNA and messenger RNA is exported to the cytoplasm. Introns, like I said before, is a non-coding sequence, a part of the gene that are non-coding sequences. And spliceosome, it's a, it's, a, it's a dynamic complex consisting of RNA and protein that removes these introns from precursor mRNA. So to sum up, the central dogma of molecular biology explains the flow of genetic information from DNA, from DNA to RNA to protein. Okay, thank you very much everyone for your kind attention.